fishing today at Carlton Towers Tench Lake, which is near Selby in North Yorkshire. And as the name suggests, it's predominantly a tench lake and I'm going a bit old school with my tactics. So I'm using a good old rod reel and float. And uh, I'm really excited about catching some of these wonderful tench from this beautiful lake. We made an early start this morning and I set up nice and quietly. And I've, while I was setting up, I've just been loose feeding a few maggots on a line a bit further out from where I'm sitting. And I've also been feeding two margin swims either side of me. So it'd just be interesting to see how the day progresses and hopefully we'll be able to catch some nice tench in the margin. That's the first bite and the, the first fish of the day. And it's fighting like absolute mad. And just try and keep him out of the weeds. But there we go. Fantastic. Absolutely beautiful tench and such a powerful fish. I've forgotten how powerful tench are. That's run me all around the lake. Let's get him in the net. Well, as you can see, it's an absolutely beautiful lake, um, very secluded. We've got reed lining it and features with trees all the way around. And you're actually only allowed to fish on this bank. So it really does make for a really beautiful, peaceful place to fish. And um, it's not very deep. I think the deepest part of the lake is probably about four foot. Um, where I'm fishing, it's only about two and a half, three foot deep. Um, it's very muddy. And it's obviously an a environment that tench absolutely thriving. There must be so much natural food here. So let's get back in again and see if we can get another fish. Well, as I mentioned at the start of the video, um, I'm actually really fishing two parts of the swim. I'm fishing further out, around about 13 metres, um, where I'm thinking that the initial disturbance of setting up and maybe Ian, the cameraman on the bank, is pushing the fish away. So I want to establish an area out there where I'm building the swim up. A little bit like match style, little and often. Um, and fishing with a waggler. It's a small 2BB canal dart. And um, with very little shot down the line. So I'm, I'm feeding and casting quite regular. And then the other line that I want to fish is in the margins. And obviously the margins are such a key place when you're fishing for tench. I think they just love the cover and also maybe as the sun gets up uh, we might find that the fish move into the into those margin areas so I'm actually feeding two spots in the margins oh I just had a little knock then missed it I'm actually feeding two spots one to the right and one to the left well there's another fish and it was so exciting because I'd seen some bubbles coming up next to my float before before I had the bite. I'm having to be so careful of uh, not letting the tents go into these reeds. But there we go.
What another beautiful fish. I took that one on four maggots. Four red maggots over the line that I'm feeding further out. It's quite a unique venue really this because you don't get too many places now where you can actually focus on tench like this and I'm absolutely loving it. It's bringing back so many memories of when I was younger and catching tench on float tactics like this. It really is exciting. Okay, let's take a look at the tackle I'm using in a bit more detail. The rod I'm using on the waggler that I'm fishing out in the lake is this 11 foot pellet waggler. Um, it's an agility rod and it's two piece. And even though it's called a pellet waggler, it's actually a very versatile rod for fishing on lakes such as this. Uh, I especially like it when the depth isn't too great like today. And the 11 foot rod is so manageable and lightweight and easy to use but it's also got a very nice progressive action that's powerful and, and will cush, cushion all the lunges of the fish like these tench today that are fighting really hard. I've matched the rod up with this 035 Super Team front drag reel which is really strong and smooth and has a very nice drag system which is obviously really important when you're playing big fish like these. Um, I still like to backwind as well but I'd like to set the clutch so that it will give line when the fish makes a sudden run. And then on my other rig for laying on or fishing over depth in the margins, I've actually used a 15 foot super team match rod. Now that sounds like a strange choice uh, to fish a lake like this, but I found that when I'm fishing in the margins, a 15 foot length really helps me in terms of being able to place the bait very nicely in difficult areas in the margins and also when I hook the fish and I'm trying to get the fish away from those snags. Again the action on the on the 15 foot rod is is nice and progressive it's got a soft tip and plenty of power in the middle section and butt so it gives me a lot of control when I'm playing these uh, hard fighting tench. So the real line that I'm using on both the rods is this diameter 20 millimeter Mac XT Mono which has um, got a breaking strain of seven and a half pounds. So it's a very strong line. Um, it's actually very reliable and robust, but being pre-stretched, it's also quite thin. So it gives me a good compromise and it means that I can fish with heavy gear, but not have to have a thick mono on the reel, which will help me get away with using smaller floats. So that's the real line. And um, on my margin rig, I'm actually fishing that straight through to that line. So I'm fishing with a bigger hook and bigger baits. So that gives me the maximum strength possible. Um, but on the lighter rig, on my 11 foot rod, I'm actually matching the hook lengths to the presentation I want to achieve, which is a bit finer. So I'm using between 016 and 018 hook lengths. And I'm also using some pre-tied hook lengths as well, which again is from our Mac XT range. And I've got hooks from a size 12 on the heavy rig um, down to a 14 and a 16 on the maggot rig. I've also tried today some uh, Drennan Red maggot hooks in a 16 and a 14, which is just a step down really in terms of strength and finesse. But it's also quite a strong hook. So I've been using those as well on the maggot when I've been using two maggots rather than a bunch of maggots. Okay, so let me take you through each rig uh, separately. And really, I mean, you couldn't get much simpler than this. Um, on my maggot rig that I'm fishing further out, I've set up this uh, 2BB um, all balsa float, which is a new float for our Mac XT range. And um, the great advantage of this float is it's quite squat, so it's not too long. When I'm fishing in shallow water, I don't want a long float diving into the swim and potentially uh, spooking the fish and it's quite buoyant as well so it does cock almost immediately and mean that I can read the bites in terms of watching the shot settle and how that reads on the float. I mentioned about having a sensitive setup with this float and that really helps me to achieve that. So as you can see I've got the bulk of 2BB 
um, around the float. And then I've got some number eight shot either side of it just to keep that in position. And I've actually got two number eights and a number 10 down the line. So that means I can add some flexibility into the rig and achieve different types of presentation. The best presentation today has been just a single number eight and a single number 10 shot, which I think has given the bait a nice natural fall down to the bottom, um, but also allowed me to identify the bites, which have been really quite sensitive. And there's the hook length, as you can see. I've perhaps got the hook length there around about uh, a foot in length with no shot on at all. I might vary that, I might reduce the length of the hook length if I'm missing bites and bring the telltale shot closer to that. But that's a um, very simple rig for fishing the maggot. And then on my margin rig, as I mentioned in the introduction, this is um, a very traditional style float ledger rig. So what I've actually done is I've secured this um, straight waggler on the line by just trapping it with some silicon rubber. So that gives me a nice, neat arrangement on the float. It also means I can adjust the float very easily and quickly without damaging the line. And the whole concept of float ledgering is obviously that the bulk, in this case, two, two AAA shot, is actually positioned on the bottom. So that's actually sitting on the lake bed. And the key thing is to adjust the float so that you've got it just settled like a normal float and any kind of bite or movement from a fish will dislodge that bulk that's sitting on the bottom and the float will either pop up giving a great lift bite or just simply disappear and again i've got um, around about a foot of line between the hook and that bulk and i'll vary that again depending on what's happening in terms of the conditions so if it's windy i've got a big toe on the lake which is pulling the float around um, or if I'm missing bites. So again, a very, very simple rig, but one that works really well with bigger baits when you're targeting fish in the margins like today. Okay, I've touched on the baits, but let's have a look at them in a bit more detail. Um, on the maggot line, I'm just simply feeding red maggots. Um, and I've just been feeding eight to 10 maggots very regularly as you could see to try and uh, encourage the fish into feeding in that area. One really good tip that I like to do when I'm nearly always fishing with maggots is I'll always prepare some floating maggots. Um, I think it's really critical because the extra buoyancy in those maggots I think really makes the, the bait present a lot better, especially when you're having to use a bit bigger hooks like today which are heavy and I'm maybe using three or four maggots. I actually think that that really helps to counterbalance the weight of the hook. On the margin swim I've made up a bit of a concoction of bait here um, composed of sweet corn, I've got casters and I've got some um, three mil pellets that I've mixed together. Um, basically because I want to try and attract the fish and get them rooting around in the margin so I've got different sized particles and I've got different types of baits that I can use so I can try uh, corn, I can try castor, I can fish maggot over the top, maybe even a worm. So I did bring some worms and um, I've even been chopping a few worms up and feeding those as well. So it's pretty simple really but I've got two different baits for the two different areas that I'm fishing. So I'll actually show you how I mount the bait on the two different rigs. Um, on the maggot rig, the best bait today has been three maggots. And um, what I like to do is hook them alternately in terms of where I actually hook them in the maggot. So what I'm doing is I'm hooking one maggot through the tail very lightly like that. Then I'm hooking another one in the normal way through the flat bit of skin on the fat head of the maggot and then I'm adding one more again through the tail and, and I think that's really important because um, it helps me to keep the bait in, in a good situation in terms of not shriveling up but it allows me to have enough hook point showing when I'm using a bunch of maggots like that. If you hook them all through the head end I think sometimes there's actually too much meat of the maggot and that can help to cause the maggot to double over so I find that a very effective way of fishing with two, three or four maggots. And then on my uh, 
margin rig with that bigger size 12 hook. I'm either using a piece of sweet corn that I'm trying to bury within the bait just to help conceal it from the fish. Again, I think tench, even though you know they can feed very strongly and, and very confidently, they, I think they can be super cute when it comes to actually taking the hook bait. So I'm trying to be as clever as I can in terms of disguising it. Um, a great bait for, for tench is, a, is an actual worm. And because I'm fishing with a positive rig, I'm actually going to hook the whole worm. So what I like to do is I just nick the very top off the worm and then I thread the hook into the top of it and pass it down as much as I can into the worm and then bring the hook point out. So as you can see there, the worm, or rather the hook, is well hidden inside the worm and the worm is actually still alive and quite wriggly so that extra att 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 attraction might help you to, to get more bites. One tip that I do do is I like to tip that off because I'm using a barbless hook like this today with a castor or a maggot and that just helps that to prevent the worm from maybe crawling off the hook um, and maybe also gives it an added attraction to the fish, you know, combining a cocktail with the worm. So that's just a couple of baits that I'm using today and again we're liking to keep things as simple as we can. Great, I've just hooked one on the uh, margin line and it's absolutely going mad. Seems to have got half the reeds with it. It's kicking really hard, but I'm pleased that I'm managing to play it out in the clear water. One thing that I've mentioned when you're trying to catch tench like this is and a long landing net like this is absolutely invaluable. It means I can get right out and net the fish without having to bring it too close in and risk the chance of snagging up. There you go. Another absolutely beautiful tench. Wonderful condition, so strong. I've really enjoyed fishing today at Carlton Towers. I think tench fishing's got to be probably my, one of my most favourite types of fishing. I hope the tips today have helped you and you can get out and catch some wonderful tench like that. Thanks for watching.